Welcome to the Crafty Mini. Uh, today we're going to be painting the Orc Bard character from HeroQuest. As I'm working through all the uh, the backing extras and exclusives that I got. As last uh, a few seasons ago we managed to get the... So I showed you the core set that was done uh, before the channel started. And we managed to get the Return of the Witch Lord set completed. So I've been working through the characters, uh, including the, the, uh, the cool rogue ones that I got bought for Christmas by uh, another channel, Just Outlook Gaming. i uh, link to them here. And uh, yeah, so the Orc Bard. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 a lot recently. And Bard's always fun. So I've, I've uh, got this character out and we're going to get him painted. So first things first, just base coat the whole thing. Now, there's a release agent on the Hero Quest miniatures. That's a bit of a pain. Uh, I've washed it and everything, but it's still there a little bit. So I have to go over the, the, the uh, base coat a couple of times. But once it's on, all the other coats go on, no problem. Right, once he's done, I'll start mixing a bit of intermediate green with the actual base coat colour of olive drab. And this is going to be the base coat for the skin itself. So this just goes on anywhere where the skin's exposed. So the arms, a little bit of his chest and his face. Uh, dead simple at this point, just blocking out the colours. And then you'll see in the next few steps how we're going to start progress up and, and highlight the skin. Right, so after that initial mix, now I'm going to go in with just more of the intermediate green to get a secondary uh, highlight on the skin. So the first coat obviously had a bit of the olive drab mixed in. Uh, the base coat was olive drab, so that's going to be working its way through. And this is just to start making the highlights pop a bit more. And then later on we'll add another colour to make the skin really nice and bright. But this initial bit is on any raised areas like the muscles and things. Um, anywhere where the, the sun would, would have caught it, just to give it a bit more definition. I'm just going around any area on the miniature. Now these miniatures, I mean they're lovely for the game and everything. They're not the best detailed, but they're good for what they are. And they're, they are actually a really fun to paint. And uh, good for newbies as well, I, rec I recommend, just because they're, they're simple. There's not a lot of like stupid miniature details on there. You know, like 40k ribbons, purity seals and things like that. Um, but yeah, really easy this bit. I'm just working on all the highlights and then we'll go from there. Right, so for this next highlight, so exactly the same thing except I'm going to be painting less of the area of that initial highlight and this is just pure intermediate green there with no olive brown. So this just goes on to the, again, the most extremes, just picking out the finer details like the fingers, the bridge of the nose, uh, the points of the ears and the tops like the, the shoulders and the bicep muscles and everything. And this is just to get that extreme highlight and you get a nice transition from the olive brown right the way through. Right, so for the final layer of skin, I add a bit of yellow. I just find this gives a really nice warmth to the skin. And uh, it's just a cool way that I've been doing green skins for the last few years now. And I really enjoy it as that last sort of final highlight. So this is just going on the very, very edges of the creases of the ears here. On the, the, the tips of the nose and the, the uh, bottom of the chin. And then just on the fingers and the very finest points of highlight on the skin and it just makes everything pop and it gives that a little bit of warmth as well to the flesh. Anyone who's followed the channel for a while you'll know in season one on the texture goblin episode we did it with this but with more yellow in and it just has a really nice texture and finish to the skin. And again tops of the, the muscles there's a lot of definition the fingers and it all just starts to come together now. Right, once that's done, um, so on the card, um, although I don't follow the, the actual design perfectly, but on the card he's got this uh, purple hat, and it's, it's one of my favourite colours. So I'm going to give him uh, some purple trousers and a purple hat, and then we'll do the shirt a different colour. So initially going on, so a little bit of the purple mixed in with that olive drab again as a base coat, so that runs through all of the colour scheme. And just giving this a base coat. So this just dulls the purple down a little bit. So when we start adding more of that purple in, you get more and more extreme highlights and you get a nice gradient running right the way through. And same with the hat now. So just initial base coat of the olive drab we mixed with purple, and then we'll start working on the highlights. So you can see now I'm adding more of the purple into that mix. So it's about a 2 to 1 ratio now and I'm starting working on the first few highlights. 
So I'll just feather this on any of the main creases and then just block out the, the bits of fabric in between that are most exposed. Anything underneath the miniature that you're not going to see between the legs has just got that initial base coat and I'm going to leave it at that because this, this will just accentuate the highlights even more. So things like the crease of the knee, you've got these cool fold lines in the fabric, all those will get a highlight. I'm just going around now, really simple. And same with the hat, so around the brim, that front flat bit that's just above his forehead and the actual top of the hat itself, they all get a nice highlight. And then the last highlight is just the purple itself pure. And this is just in very select areas. You can see I'm just scratching this on and again in the only in the most extreme areas where I want the, the most highlight on there. So mainly just the actual folds themselves on the clothing, the knees as it's prominent and the, the fabric's pulled tight over the knee and the around the trim of the hat. Now I started in a bit of yellow in now into the purple and this is just because I just want like a pinky colour. It brightens it up enough and just having this on the very uh, top edges of the hat itself on the brim. And again, just, just adds a bit of variation to the purple because this is obviously the most exposed if you imagine the sunlight's right above the miniature and the zenithal position. And this just gives the, a really extreme highlight and just differentiates it a little bit from the trousers. Right, so onto the boots and other bits. So starting off with the leather brown simple base coat all over the boots and then we'll use the colours that are on the palette to mix into this to do the other types of brown and things like that just to make them all stand out differently and also then you haven't you're not wasting paints that are on your palette and you haven't got to have about six different pots either so really simple and again i want that olive drab running all the way through as like a mother colour on the uh, miniature so same again i've blocked out the boots just going to block out the loot on his back and then we'll start adding all the highlights and extra colours and you can see now I'm going to start adding a bit of the lighter purple, a little bit of the yellow that's mixed with the green and this is just to do some highlights on the brown and it just, just lightens it enough and again it's there just to add a bit of, bit of difference in colour differentiating from things like the boots and, and go from there so you see there now I'm adding even more yellow in and this is where I'll do the initial highlights on the boots and you get because you've got that initial base colour running all the way through the gradient in between it should be quite subtle and it look more realistic and again this next highlight and a little bit on the feathers so I'm adding more of the yellow just to block this out and then we'll just do little dots with the extreme um, edges of these that I think they're like feathers on his cap just to break it up and the yellow and the purple is a nice contrast and it goes well with the yellow that's in the green colour and in the browns that are on the miniature so it all come, it all marries together. And just doing the final edges and that's the little feather done. And he's starting to take shape now. Okay and the last highlight on the boot so I've just added a touch more of the yellow into the brown mix. So it's about 3 to 1 at this point and just do the most extreme parts of the, the boots. So mainly the tip, the uh, sort of round part of the toes and a little bit around the edging at the top of the boot. Right, so onto his shirt. So the shirt on the card, I believe it's blue with like a yellow trim, um, but I wanted something that matched, went in with the purple a bit more. So I've got this beige color, just mixed it in with a bit of the purple. I'm just gonna block the shirt out initially. And you get this sort of pinkish violet uh, colour, it looks really nice when it's done. Just brightens him up, adds a lot of colour and character to the, to the model. And with that being the initial sort of layer through shirt done, going on to the neck, the first highlight. So I just had a bit more of the beige in, just to brighten it up, and going around and just picking out those extreme highlights, so the edges, um, areas on the shoulders that are more pronounced. His back especially, he's got a lovely bit where, so the top of his back would be a lot brighter, and a couple of folds again in the fabric. These miniatures, are, as I say, are really good for especially newbies, or people who haven't painted for a while and coming back into it, because it's just enough detail to get used to certain techniques and things, but not too much that it's overwhelming. And this, I, I really like this colour. And it's, you know, a barge should be something extravagant and flamboyant. 
the character on this model is really nice so well. I love the fact that it's an orc because it's it's not something you usually associate with that race in like fantasy games usually you know they're like fighters barbarians and things um, but yeah I love this mini he's really cheeky got good facial expression but there we go so that's the highlight and then we'll do one more with just a touch more base to lighten it up and just do the very very edges and it just makes that upper shirt pop and again with the purple and the olive brown that run the base coat it marries in with the trousers and the hat and the olive brown that runs all the way throughout the miniature so the chest just gets a, a bit of the base brown because this will have um, a simple sepia wash on just to get into all the the little bits of detail that are on it and again it's just enough to darken it and and just differentiate it from the boots because I don't want any of the brands clashing too much and really simple this and same for all the straps so he's got a strap for his uh, rapier on his back and a strap that goes across the body for the loot and these again they all just get the base brown and these will be washed down just to break them up from the other brains that are on the miniature. And with this paint job, it's not a it's not a showpiece one, it's there to be played with, so I'm not gonna spend as much time as I would with something that's like a diorama or uh, say like the goblin from season one, where it's you know it's there to go on show. This is something that's gonna be picked up a lot, so once it's done, it's gonna get a really thick um, varnish coat to make sure that yeah, none of the paint chips or anything or any wear or weathering. And it's there to be played with and the colours are there to punch and stand out amongst all the other characters because when with those of you who have played hero quest when everything's on the table you should be able to just spot your character and if you think when you're sitting at the desk uh, at the table or wherever it is you're playing same with war games as well when you're standing there you're looking at your miniatures from about anywhere between sort of what two feet to three feet away so if it's enough for, it, for you to distinguish same with your armies when they've got a unified colour they all look good when they're together it's only if you want to pick up the miniature and start looking at it in minute detail. But for sort of game ready, as I call it, this is this is absolutely fine for a paint job. It does what I need it to, and you, you know you can spot your character, and he's got good punchy colours. So just with the pure beige now, I'm just marking out his teeth. Now it does look like he's got a big smiley white grin here, but with a bit of wash that'll dull that down. And he's, it'll just enough to break his face up and make his teeth pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to give the loot a wash, the strap in the chest, and a little bit in his mouth, and it just breaks all those browns up. Uh, slight aside, these pots by GW are a pain in the backside. The little hinge goes so the, the lid won't stay open, and you're going back and forth like this, and there you go, you end up spilling the bloody solution. And just for his rapier, I'm doing a, a dark grey with a lighter grey highlight. This is something I've started doing on uh, fancy miniatures. Unless the blade's out, I don't bother with silvers. Now, I tend to do these greys, and it's, it's it gives a nice effect. It's matte. It's not shiny. And um, it just it just marries well with the rest of the miniature. Right, so there he is done. Uh, I'm just going to do a German grey on his base, just so it matches all the other miniatures in the box. And here are some uh, pictures of the finished model. Uh, really happy with this. Again, simple, game-ready paint scheme. Makes it pop. You can see everything. Nice bit of character in this model as well. It was uh, fun to paint. And just nice, simple paint job. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. We've got a couple of proper detailed paint jobs coming up. Uh, managed to get a lovely, like a, it's like a zombie fungal bear bust. Is the best way to describe it so that'll be coming up soon in a video uh, for this season where it's predominantly going to be painting to be honest and i've got a little diorama i want to make for a troll but thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode cheers <laughs>